Okay, so welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. Today, let's talk about six key things you've got to consider prior to going into homesteading. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is what do you want to accomplish with your homestead? When you first start homesteading, it's important to have a clear vision. You don't have to necessarily move to the woods and try and be completely self-sufficient on food, water, and power, but you need to have an idea of what you do want to do. If you want two acres in town and to have a big garden and try and grow some of your own food, that's okay. If you want to move to 100 acres and be self-sufficient on power and water, that's okay too. If you want to do somewhere in the middle, go for it, but have a clear vision. You know, 80% of homesteaders fail because they go out and they don't have a clear vision. For us, we knew we were going to come out, we were going to try and be completely self-sufficient on our power and water, and we were going to try and grow as much food as we could. We've been here now three years. We are not completely self-sufficient. We are self-sufficient on power and water, uh, but when it comes to food, we're still buying all of our feed for the animals. Uh, we're still buying produce at the grocery store. We're getting closer every year, but it's a learning curve. And we do have a complete vision of where we're hoping to be. Okay, so the second thing to really consider is a tough one. It's all about the finances. So when you're planning your dream of what your homestead is going to look like, don't forget to figure out how much all this is going to cost. Um, like for us, we needed fences, we needed barns, we can do a lot of the labor ourselves. So I had my dad help me come up with an idea of what the lumber was going to cost. And then we add 25% to come up with a good solid number. Um, but you've got to have a good way to, to pay for all this. When we first did our homestead plan, we knew that we had to sell the house in Mississippi for a certain bottom dollar. And then we had actually planned to be unemployed for two years. So how the homestead is now versus how it was supposed to be, we've upgraded a lot of things because not only did we sell the house for the bottom dollar number, but the husband actually got a virtual job. And so he still got an income right out of the hole that we never planned to have. So we've made upgrades. Um, it's easier to upgrade than it is to go backwards. So plan for your worst case scenario Maybe a little chicken coop, and if you've got the extra funds, you can make it a little bit bigger. The The big thing we see a lot of times is people bite off too much. Uh, we know some folks that have been planning, by the time you talk to them about it all, a $300,000 homestead when maybe they have $100,000. So you've got to think about, figure out what labor you can do, what labor you're going to have to hire out, and plan accordingly and, and pad your numbers a little bit. Okay, so the third thing you need to consider is are you physically capable of homesteading? So I'll give you a reference. I'm a, roughly about 6 foot, 175 pounds, done martial arts. I can lift these hay bales. And in our area, hay bales are 125 pounds for the smaller square bales. Uh, where we live down south, most of them are 60 to 75 pounds. So it is based on your location. Um, but like where we buy 10 to 12 tons of hay a year, in a weekend, that means we are moving 24,000 pounds of hay. And it ain't me. I'm the tractor operator for unloading. It's this man right here moving all of it. If you don't have big animals and you don't need hay, you might be thinking, oh, my, my um, amount of lift weight isn't going to be that much. Keep in mind that a bag of chicken feed is 40 to 50 pounds. And I put those away as does he. So there's that to consider when it comes to gardening. If you've got raised beds like we do, we're packing soil bags because our soil is so miserable here and they're what, 35 pounds? Mm -hmm. So be realistic with what, what you need to do. Um, not saying that there's not great ways to accommodate out there, but you do need to have a really honest assessment of what you are capable of doing. All right, so item four to consider is do you have the skills to do homesteading or what you want to do on your homestead? So if your homestead plan involves building your own cabin and you've never so much as built a birdhouse, maybe you're biting off a little more than you can chew. Uh, for us, we started personally 
growing up in a construction family, my father's built pretty much every house I've ever lived in. Uh, so we were expected to help when we were kids. So I had a lot of practical hands-on knowledge. Dad's also come down and helped me remodel uh, the last two homes that we've lived in. So when we set out to build 30 by 32 barns, we weren't at all daunted. It's something that we've done. I've built coops on my own. I built a barn down in Mississippi by myself. Uh, but be realistic. What are you capable of? And if you can't do it and don't have the skill, do you know somebody who's willing to come over and teach you? Um, furthermore, if, if your plan is to, you know, do a garden and you've never grown a tomato, trust me, there's a learning curve. It's not as simple as to buy those pretty little plants at the store and put them in the ground. So what skills do you have and what skills are you going to need to have? There are classes. Uh, there are books. There's a lot of stuff online that you can look up and, and learn about. So topic five is going to be having everyone on board with homesteading as a lifestyle. Yeah, so when you decide that you're going to do this, make sure that your spouse, your kids, anybody that's going out to the homestead is actually on board. This is something that takes everybody to be on the same page. So if you're fighting the wife or the, the kids, sit down and have that conversation i'm a country girl grew up on a farm this is mr suburb so he can tell you a little bit more about coming around to this idea yes yeah, it, it was a hard one for me honestly i grew up in the suburbs as a family we had a small garden in a backyard up until i went to college and that i didn't have any concept of what it was going to be i understood engineering i understand mechanical things so to have animals and that really took a lot for me to come around to and to get my mind in the right place. But as a lifestyle, it's a challenge and that's where I love every day is to come out and to figure out the challenge of living out here. Yeah, so just have those conversations, whether it's with the kids or the spouse and uh, make sure everybody's on the same page. All right, so topic six is all about your attitude. So when it comes to homesteading, you really need to try and stay positive. Count your wins and not so much your losses. There are going to be days where the wind kicks up 30 miles an hour and blows the roof off of your greenhouse. You could sit and cry about it or you could just kind of get over it and move on. There are days that the chickens aren't doing so well and maybe you lose one. There's days that you lose a goat. But there are going to be days where you have nothing but wins. And usually in every day, even if you've had a loss, there's still something to stay positive about. If this is what you really want to do, count your wins, don't dwell on your losses, and remember that every day on the homestead is a little bit different. Okay, so those are the six topics we think everybody should consider prior to homesteading. Now, if you're already homesteading, We'd like to know what you think of those six. Are they on point? Or do you have something else you would rather see on that list or to add to it? And don't forget, we're also on Instagram. We also have a Facebook page. So you can always subscribe there to see what we're doing in between all of our uploads. And then we'll see you next time on Sprague River Homestead.